Hey now, so it is April 1st, happy April Fool's Day, but not joking, my busy season's starting to wind down, so I'm going to start shooting some more videos more consistently, try to get through the bees, which is, uh, it's taken longer than I thought, but it is what it is. Anyways, I did Roger Bresnahan, and then I realized I skipped the great Lou Boudreau. I wouldn't say great, very good Lou Boudreau. Uh, Lou Boudreau. Very good hitter, not a great, I wouldn't say all time by himself, a Hall of Famer of hitting and fielding alone, but he also managed Cleveland until today, their most recent World Series. So he was a very good manager. He was a very good player. You add those two together, he is, the Veterans Committee elected him to the Hall of Fame in 1970. I think it was his ninth time on the ballot, but yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, what's interesting about Lou Boudreau is Ever since I started collecting Hall of Famers, which was about 1993, Lou Boudreau lived in the Chicago area, and he would never, never leave the city of Chicago. A matter of fact, in 1987, I used to go to the shows in Toledo, and I remember the promoter telling me, I said, I think you'll get it like Lou Boudreau in one day. And he said, we offered Lou Boudreau a ton of money. He doesn't like flying anymore. He's very scared of flying. And so we offered to drive him in a limo from Chicago to Toledo three, four hours and back in the same day and pay him a lot of money. And he's like, no, nope, he didn't want to do it. He was just it's Chicago or bust. So eventually I was able to get to Chicago to a show. Uh, I remember it was very cheap, maybe 20 bucks. And the line wasn't very long at all because everyone in Chicago pretty much already had Lou Boudreaux's autograph. He was very common on the Chicago circuit. So without further ado, let's take a look at the autograph of Lou Boudreaux. So here we have my autograph, and this is a very typical later in life autograph. It still flows very nicely. He signed this just a couple years before his death. He was active all the way to the end of his lifetime on the autograph circuit, like I said. And what's great about Lou Boudreaux's autograph is you can tell he took a lot of pride in his autograph. He signed every single letter, as you can see right here, at least at every page signing. There are a couple of checks out there, and they're like 20, 40 bucks. And he rushed his signature a little bit. But here you can see every nice letter. Uh, so whenever you're looking at a Lou Boudreau autograph, what you want to look for is like the L, oh, sorry, the O, the U, and pretty much the O U here and the R E A U here should be not bouncing. It should be on like a single plane, as you can see right here. Let me enlarge that right now. So you can see right here, it's on a single plane. And that's what you want to see. That's a beautiful Lou Boudreau autograph. So, and like, if you go to the PSA database, you're going to see everything very similar. Again, this is probably regular autograph for him. You can see the right slant. The L, the B, and the D may dip down a little bit. But the L never connects to the O. And the Boudreau is usually one straight up line. Sorry. Oh. Again, this is an older autograph. It looks very similar. You can see the O, the U, and it looks like it's signed on a nice, even plane, very little bounce to his autograph. And again, we can just keep going through the PSA database. What's cool about these plaques is, like Al Barlick, if you were to mail away to the Hall of Fame, oops, sorry about that. Let me go back to that. Right here, if you were to mail away to the Hall of Fame, he was one of those signers. For free, you would get back a Lou Boudreau signed placard so i had a couple of them i think i traded them over the years but yeah i had them before now baseball right here again this is a typical baseball you're going to see the l overlapping and the o cutting through the l and again the b starts down and the rest is pretty much on an even playing line with the b slanted right now a lou boudreau baseball should not cost you more than 50 bucks for a sweet spot ball Maybe with a Hall of Fame 70 inscription, no more than 100. Not very rare at all. So, sorry we skipped you, Lou. Uh, again, great signer. He was also Denny McLean's father-in-law, which a lot of people in Detroit knew. So, that's about it. Next, we're going to jump to George Brett. Uh, again, another in-person living Hall of Famer. Much tougher than Lou Boudreau, though. He's one of the tougher living Hall of Famers. So, that's about it. As always, keep clear.